Chris? What? N impossible. Impossible. There's no way that I'm growing this with no heat source besides the earth. There's no way. Is this possible? Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to demonstrate the effectiveness of uh, my geothermal earth battery situation I have on the go. For the purpose of this video and this experiment, I have not lit the fire all day. It is March the 23rd. Outdoors is about minus eight degrees. This is inside. In here we have about 9.3, 9.4. So what's running right now is the blower on the furnace and my four fans down the other end. As you can see, no fire. No fire? What do you mean? Let's make sure I'm right, folks. All right, so it's showing 10, all right? So bear with me, it's a little warmer than I thought. But that is from the geothermal and the heat of the lights. So if I want, I can light the fire and there's no trouble to get this place up to, um, you know, 21 degrees is what I like to keep it for growing. But for the purpose of the video, I just wanted to show you guys that the geothermal works. There are some downfalls. So I'm gonna light the fire now and give you a little lecture on my geothermal system and how I think it works and whether or not you guys should invest in one or what you should or shouldn't do. One thing I don't like about running the geothermal without the wood furnace is that you increase the humidity of the greenhouse a lot. And right now, for me, I would like to have a humidity of around 60%. And that's something I'm able to accomplish in the winter with the help of the wood furnace. There's no trouble to get the temperatures up to 15 or 16 degrees when it's minus 40 outside. I've had to experience that. And with the wood furnace and the geothermal, we can accomplish that without having to break the bank when it comes to spending money. If I had my time back, I would have made the system a little bit bigger and a little bit deeper. I would have went with bigger fans to circulate more air per square inch. I would have went with an eight inch manifold, an eight inch pipes, eight inch grid. But the problem is accessibility to the equipment that you require to do such jobs. The biggest I could get was six inch weeping tile for this job. If I could have access to eight inch, that's what I would have used. For now, in order to help fight the humidity and get the temperature up a little bit more, I'm definitely gonna be using a wood furnace. At the end of the day, my geothermal system has two grids. And what I'm finding from my experiments is that the grid at the six foot level is actually operating better than the grid at the four foot level. So in the future, if I could, I would dig eight foot and six foot for my grids versus six foot and four foot. There still needs to be a way to adjust for the humidity. If you can't adjust for the humidity and you have to end up using a dehumidifier, you're ending up burning up electricity anyway that you could be using for heating. So there has to be a happy medium. We have to figure out what we can do with that humidity and maybe we can convert it into pure water that we can use in our hydroponic systems. Because the water that you do take out of a dehumidifier is regularly pretty pure. So we'll have to see how much humidity is actually down there, how much we can capture, how much it would cost to capture and recover that water and then how viable it would be and how useful would it be to actually use in the system. And maybe then we can actually get rid of some humidity. At the end of the day, if you don't ever try, you don't ever know. So I'm happy that I tried it. Uh, I would continue to experiment with geothermal in the future and I would make the updates that I would like to have done here and I would keep using it. 